All right, today we have a new 48 volt rack mount battery from Watt Cycle. Let's take a closer look at the front panel here. We've got our positive and negative terminals. There are two of them here. We've got a breaker. We've got a touchscreen. And then we've got our communication ports over here. On the touchscreen, we can look at each individual cell voltage. There's uh, some pack data here. Shows our state of charge, our voltage max and minimum cell voltage temperatures and i think this battery has an active balancer yeah so it shows here balancing current uh, and some information regarding the balancer uh, we have some sort of chart here we'll have to look at that as we're charging and discharging the battery i believe and then we can set our CAN bus protocols. Here we go. So we've got Victron. Then we got Pylon Tech. Oh, there we go. We can scroll. Yeah, there's a lot. Crow Watt. <laughs> so pretty neat. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy fully charged. All right, guys, I've got the battery fully charged. Now, while I was charging it, it did get to 100% on the state of charge, but the voltage, it stopped charging at about 55.3 volts. And the reason why is because it was a little bit out of balance. Uh, there was one cell that was uh, peaking up higher than the others, and it caused it to uh, shut down at 55.3 volts. Now, the active balancer came in very handy in this situation because it was, well, it was actually balancing uh, the pack uh, at around three amps. I was watching this little uh, balance current here. And so what I did was uh, I pulled a little bit of power to get the uh, BMS to go out of the protection mode and so the charge would come back on and so after letting it set for a few hours uh, I ran the charge again I got to 55.59 uh, before it shut off and then after a few more hours I ran the charge again and I got 56.09 and then 56.53 and then 56.60 and then 57.33 now 57.33 is fine with me and that's where i would be okay for it to charge up to because i like to charge a 48 volt battery to 56.8 it's kind of where my my spot is uh, so i was happy there but i went ahead and just kept um, letting it balance, you know, charging it up, letting it balance, charging it up, letting it balance. And then I finally got to 58.05. So I, I went ahead and just called it uh, fine from that point on. That's close enough. But, I mean, that shows that the active balancer did its thing and it did it relatively uh, quick because if this was a passive balancer, it would have took forever to get it to balance. Anyways, uh, we're ready to go ahead and do a capacity test. So I've got my little load tester set up here and I've got it zeroed out. So let's go ahead and just start it. And we'll let that run and when it's done, I'll come back and we'll take a look. All right, the capacity test is complete and we did not pull full capacity on this battery. We actually only got 97.9 uh, amp hours, uh, 5,034 watt hours. All right guys, so I've got it set up to have another go at the capacity test. Uh, I've got it fully charged back up to 100%. And it uh, was 
uh, unbalanced again and we weren't getting you know above 55.4 or something before it would shut off on the charge I didn't want to sit here and try to get it to balance up again so I just charged it until it stopped and that's where we're gonna go from uh, anyways I've got it set up on my other shunt here and my Victron inverter we're gonna pull a capacity test through this and see if we get the 100 amp hour so I'm gonna go ahead and start it okay there we go and I'm running the heater as the load uh, we are pulling 23.3 amps this time and showing here uh, 25 point 25.2 degrees Celsius so uh, the battery is uh, not cold or anything like that all right so I'm just gonna let this run and we'll see what, what we get all right guys I think we're doing a little better this go around uh, showing that we have 2.1 amp hours left to go uh, we're still hanging in there Yeah, so uh, we've done 90, a uh, little over 98 amp hours now, so that's better than last time so far. All right, so we have less than one amp hour to go, so we've done uh, over 99 amp hours. So if we can squeak this last bit out here, we'll pass. Okay, so close. We just have a little bit left to go. All right, here we go. I think we're going to make it. Yeah. And we got a full 100 amp hours. All right, so I turned the inverter off. All right, so that time we passed. We got a full 100 amp hours out of the battery. So I can go back in here and up the percentage on this and we'll count down some more to see what else is left in the battery. It's just this shunt doesn't uh, count down past what you have it set. So let's do let's put 5% on. All right, so I'm gonna turn the inverter back on. There we go. Let's see what else we can get out of this. I don't think it's going to be much because I'm looking at the app here and our minimum voltage on one cell is 2.53 and there it went alright so we got slightly over 100 amp hours but we did get there and so this time it did indeed pass alright so we got all the screws out let's open this guy up All right, here we are. We have a nice big BMS across this section here. It says watt cycle. So it has a watt cycle branding on it there, I can see. And we have a, like a bus bar connection kind of system here. So the positive has a bus bar that goes to the breaker and then from the breaker to the positive terminals there's the back of our screen and then on the negative uh, we also have those uh, same kind of bus bar style uh, connections 
so far uh, looking pretty clean on the build here uh, let's get this little cover off so we can see the top of the cells all right there's the top of the cells so we've got aluminum laser welded bus bars with the relief hump there is looks like fiberboard between the cells and then between the cells and the casing and then we've got this bars that go across that hold the cells down and then here are the pressure relief uh, valves here on top of the cells that's clear and all the balance leads are wrapped up nicely and they are the wire management is good you know it's tucked in it's clean hmm so I'm seeing uh, some of the QR codes on the cells look like a laser etching like you would normally see but I'm seeing some of them that look like it's printed is that a sticker huh all right so I removed this uh, bar from the top here so I could get access uh, to the cell here and I dug into it deeper I took off uh, this plastic stuff and I peeled up the sticker I wanted to see what was behind it and uh, it actually does have the QR code uh, behind it I don't know if you can see it let me see if I can show a picture that I took so it does have uh, the QR code behind the sticker and as far as I can tell the the information that's on this QR code that's etched into the cell is the same information that's on the sticker now I think I see what is the reason behind the sticker um, if you can see uh, this little circle that's been imprinted on top of the cell well I think that was a mistake because what it does is it extends up into the QR code and it it obscures part of the numbers uh, on the side so that's the reason I think that they put these stickers on because there was a mistake with that little circle I think that circle and I don't know what that circles for but I think it's only supposed to be on this side see there so I don't know exactly uh, why but I feel like that was a mistake and so they ended up having to print the QR information on a sticker and put it on top of it that's what I think because the ones that ha that have no stickers you can see there's an indention of that little circle on this side but it's not on this side all right guys i think that's going to wrap up the video as always let me know what you think about this battery down in the comments uh, i'll leave links and i'll catch you on the next one